Welcome back friends, it's Melanie with Melanie Stamps and today we are playing with the four petal collection and let me recommend you stay till the very end. It's my absolutely favorite card I've made recently and you don't want to miss it. Hello crafty friends, today we are going to be playing with quite a large collection from Spellbinders. When this released back in the spring, um, there was so much of it I liked. I did not get it then, but I have since collected it. And um, I played with it when I was away for a week crafting. And I just wanted to share with you the cards that I designed. So this is the Essential Petals Collection. And it all revolves around this shape. This is the Essential Four Petals Label die set. And it's the concentric die set. I think I've shown this one in a video before. We've used it before. It is very, very useful anytime you can get these layering dies. They work for everything. So um, we're going to be using this, of course, today. Um, this one here is actually our first card up. This is the four petal thank you floral. And this is a lovely set to be able to create this branch. We're going to layer this branch here to create a thank you card. And then you have the four petal bloom reflection and this one here has this top piece that reflects on the bottom. And then you have all these layering pieces. And this is just like a puzzle piece. It's a, it's a guide. And all these pieces layer right on top of the guide, which makes layering easy and fun. This set comes with a foiling plate. This is the four petal scroll label. And it has a gorgeous for you sentiment in the center in a die that cuts it out perfectly. This one here I've used in a couple videos, I believe, the scrolled punch and pierce plate. This can be used as a cover plate or it can be used individually. When you cut this out, it cuts three pieces and it all also, as you notice, has that same shape as the original die set. This one here is the four petal floral 3D embossing folder, which does have that same um, shape in the center. And as you can see here, all the detail on it. And then this was an extra addition that they released at the same time. Thanks enclosed sentiments. These each have a shadow die. And the font is quite um, small, so it fits anywhere you need to put it, but it has a shadow, so it stands out. So that's pretty nice. I don't believe this is in any of our samples today, but I just wanted to show it because it was released with the collection. And um, as you can tell there, there are quite a bit of sentiments there. You can do a lot with this set. So let's go ahead and start our card. For this whole um, set of cards, I believe there's four of them. Um, I used a paper collection from my stash as the inspiration. So that's where this color scheme came from. And I just used those pattern papers as my mojo. So that's how I designed this card collection. So I'm just going to go ahead and start this by adhering this branch where I want it on my card design. And the beauty of doing any of these florals that Spellbinders releases is that they really do guide you as to where to put everything. And of course, that doesn't mean you can't make it your own and put things where you see fit. You always can change up your design like I will show you at the end of this card. I made another card that I used it this set a little differently just to give you an idea. But 
this um, for for the beginner or for someone that is just not quite sure where to put things or someone that just wants it to be easy and wants a roadmap. These sets are beautiful to do that with. So you see here, these little dots are telling you that's where the larger flowers go. And then these little tiny dots are where the smaller flowers go. So where each of those buds were, there's one of these little itty bitty dots. So we will go ahead and make those little bitty flowers first and get those where they go. I just love the little roadmap that Spellbinders gives you. Then you can focus on choosing colors and having fun. And you don't have to worry about how it's going to look in the end because you know it's all going to be spaced out perfectly. The designer did that for you when they designed the product. And you will have a beautiful outcome every single time. You can focus on the just the enjoyment of the process. There we go. I really had fun designing around the paper. It was it was quite a fun way of doing this. So all of us have lots of paper in our stash. So give it a try and tell me what you think. Just grab one of those old packs of paper on your shelf and find something that speaks to you and then pull out a set like this that's layering and has lots of color in it has lots of layering pieces or, or has lots of um, different, you know, that you can envision um, multiple colors being used and use that pattern paper as your focal for choosing your colors. It's a fun way to design. I had a friend recently, she's a pretty new friend, and she asked me about designing. And this is a fun way to choose a color palette. I missed the little piece that goes on top here. This one is a three petal flower. So you have the back and you have the middle. And then you have a little like bud that goes right over here. And look, then you have like a three dimensional little flower. One, two, three, it's done. And look at the etching. It's so detailed and you didn't have to do it. It was done for you by the dies. I just love that. So we're going to put this one down here on the bottom facing our sentiment. And I went ahead and did the sentiment beforehand because that was a little tedious. I double layered. I did two of each letter and glued them on top of each other. And then I used my little six inch T ruler and I layered it put this down like this and got it where I wanted it and I actually put the U on top here to, to show my spacing and I got it where I wanted it and then I put it on there and that just made it easy for me to get it lined up so I did that because that was time consuming but I also doubled up the branch I did two of those and I glued them so that it would have depth you can see that it just gives it a little more raised depth, which I really like. So this one was just a single flower with just a single center. So I went ahead and did that one. And actually, we could pop that up and have a little more dimension. Why don't we do that? That would be fun if I can put my fingers on my phone. On my phone. That'll just give a little extra something something so don't be scared to make it your own either with colors or with the arrangement like on this you could use all this flower and put that on all of the large circles you could you know you could change it up you could get another floral set out of your stash use this branch and change all the florals that would be really fun. Look at that. 
I like that. Okay, let's glue this last little flower. And then we have our leaves. We probably should have done our leaves first. Sitting here chatting with all of you. Tends to get me sidetracked. I enjoy sharing with y'all though. Just a little center in there. Push that down. And we'll go ahead and put this little guy. And look at that, it was a scrap on the back. But I, oh, that was the label on the back of the cardstock. I think I will turn this one around, face him downwards. Yeah, I like that. Oh, those colors are so pretty. So, let's see if we're going to be able to get these leaves under here and make sure they match. They do go different directions, they're directional. So, you want to make sure they're going to fit the leaf you're putting them on before you glue them down. We only have three of them here, so that one fits there. Slide this under that little flower petal, if I can. Oops, it's slipping all over the place. There we go. Alrighty, then we will see about this little guy. Does he go there? He does look like he fits there. You know, I might go ahead and use my tweezers. That might be a little easier. Oops, it snagged on and didn't let go, but I got it in place. And you know if these leaves don't go exactly on, the packaging actually shows them offset. And it just shows, uh, it looks like a highlight, or not a highlight, a shadow behind the leaf. So it does not have to be perfect. Looks good on that one. Slip that right under there and look at there. We got all of them on there. Okay, to give you an idea of the paper pad, this is my card base. So, ba va voom that is the pattern paper that I was working from. So, I'm going to go ahead and use some foam tape, and we will get this bad boy on. Then I'm going to show you a little alternative to this one that I have finished. It's just a simple card, but I wanted to show it to you to give you an idea of how else you can use this little die set. On an A2 card. Let me get that. That's really pretty. And that is a 5 by 7. Um, I wanted to do that so it showed off the paper as well. 
And I might even get like some Winca Stella or something and put it on the petals just to brighten it up a little bit or put, put a few rhinestones, maybe in gold, some gold rhinestones on that. That might be pretty, but let me show you this card. This card, I just cut off a small branch from this and made that little embellishment there at the bottom. And this here is the foiled plate and this is the waist from the first time I foiled it. And that's gonna be coming up in our next card. It's right here. This was the first foil and this was the second foil. So, and then I alternated the sentiments. You see, this is the waist sentiment and this is the original sentiment. So then I used that cover plate in the background of that one. So this is an A2 size, and it is really, really striking, I think. But it really, really worked, and I just love this little embellishment there at the bottom. So that's tying in three of your sets from this collection. Set those aside. And I will be back in a YouTube minute or second, and I'll get all this card out and ready. Okay, guys, I've got number two out, and this one here, I have embossed the embossing um, folder from this gorgeous four petal collection, and it has some of the most detailed centers of these flowers I think I've ever seen. I think that's my favorite part of this embossment. I mean, look at that detail. Um, I really, really like this folder. So I've attached the foiled um, piece in the center and I've attached a few of these flowers here at the bottom. So we're going to assemble some of these flowers. These flowers are not from the collection. I'll link this small set down below. It's one I, I picked up on the website um, during a sale. It was a really, really good price. I think it was like $5. Um, I don't know if it'll go back on sale or not, but it's something worth watching for. It's similar to their bold blooms, but it's a miniature version. And there we go. We will just glue our pieces down here. Something like so. Looks good. Cover that stem a little bit. If you have this set already, I really hope this encourages you to get this set out and play with it. Um, I've really had a great time with this set. And then for the sentiment, like I showed you earlier, all the detail, I love the piercing around the sentiment. So I'm going to hook that one down in the center of this foil plate design. The intricacy is just gorgeous. It's foil, so I have to hold it for a second, but it is worth it. Make sure it's center. Yeah, looks good.
So there is my next card. This is also a five by seven. I really like the way that turned out. Okay, I did, while I was um, getting those pieces out for that one, I did go ahead and add these little gems. These are the um, Spellbinders Color Essential Sequins in Peak Peach Opalescent. I think that finished that off really nicely. So I'm going to switch on over to our last card. And once I get these all out, I will be right back. Hey guys, welcome back. Okay guys, I have got all the pieces out here. And we're going to go ahead and assemble this other half. I've got to finish this half. So we're going to assemble this half together. Um, that way you have all the instructions on how to do all of the layers. So, like I said, this is like a road map, which is wonderful. So each of these go on top of each other and they fit perfectly. It's a beautiful thing. They fit very perfectly. And these are like little seashells. That's what they look like, or that's what they remind me of, little seashells. This actually has four layers on this one. And for the green down here, I have done a double layer of that green just to give it a little extra dimension. So there is that one. And that one is going to be placed right here on this area and like I said it fits like a glove fits perfectly each one of these areas each of the flowers fit perfectly so it's like your little road map on your cardstock so we'll just do the same thing with the different ones This is another like seashell. It's just a little smaller. There's one on either side. It's also got four pieces. Same as the big one. And I've done it in the same color scheme. This little piece I'm going to go ahead and use my tweezers for. Right there. Oh, I put glue on both sides. There's that one. Go ahead and attach this on this one here. And I've pre-made another one off screen. I know this might end up being a long video, but I have tried to squeeze all these in and not have it be too terribly long. We're going to go ahead and make a second one of these, but I've got the first one done. This is kind of like a fan, is what it makes me think of. This is like a fan flower. It's very pretty. And to make that one, we've got three pieces. And I am going to use my tweezers for this one. It's very delicate, this little thin piece. It's like having an extra pair of hands with little tiny fingers. Just 
squeeze that in place. Right along the edge of that one. And then we have a little center, flower center here. Oops. Like so. And then we've got that one. Now for all these other flowers, these are all single layer flowers. They could be double layer if you wanted to do centers for them, not a paper, but I'm going to go ahead and use my Fashion Gold Adhesive Embellishments um, for their centers because I wanted to pull out the gold that I used for this sentiment, which is the same foiled sentiment that I used in the other previous cards. I thought it was just perfect for this center strip here. So I'm just going to put these in place, match up their coordinating sizes. Here again, these colors all came from the paper that this is going to sit on. It's all from the same collection. And it's an older collection, so there's no sense in me linking it. Like I said, it's from my stash. So just dig through your stash and find something that inspires you. Because this definitely inspired me. I could not stop making these cards. I was not planning on making four cards like Melanie. The video is going to be an hour long if you make four cards. So I hope you all don't mind me pre-doing some of these steps ahead of time. But I do that for your sanity. <laughs> I don't want you guys having to sit through a ton of gluing. So there we go. So, so pretty. I love these rich colors. So now we're just going to take our embellishments here and what I did is I took the larger ones let's see these I believe and put them on the larger flowers hopefully we have enough of the larger ones I think we do I think we have exactly enough. Oh no, we have enough, yeah. Oh, I love this. And then the next size down, and that's what I love about these self-adhesive gems is they give you so many sizes. These are two different size flowers, so I use two different size, oh, there's only two of those. I use two different size embellishments. So now we're going to put this guy right here. Do I want him flat? No, I'm going to raise him a little bit because that doesn't quite lay in there. So we'll use some of our foam squares. You know, this is only 80 pound paper here that I was foiling on. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a little extra stability there. press. Oh, I love that. Oh, this might be my favorite one, guys. That is just so, 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 so pretty. So, so pretty. 
Okay, and for the pattern paper, look at the coordination. Isn't that awesome? So I'm going to pop this up. It really does help my channel, guys, when you guys watch to the end. That's one reason I try to make these videos um, as short as possible because it does allow my video to be seen by more people on YouTube. So by watching to the end, it does help me. So I'm going to ask you guys if and when possible to watch to the end and in return I'm going to try not to make too terribly long videos um, and I'd like to know in the comments if you have stuck it out with me um, which of these is your favorite okay so let's spread these out and you tell me which is your favorite? Is it the first one we did? The little bonus card that we I had done. The second one we did? Or the last one that we did? My favorite is this one. The last one. So, um, leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. I hope you had fun today. Have a great week. Bye-bye, friends.